Rich people are annoying because tell me why it was a typical Friday evening. I was just lounging on the couch after having a hectic week with exams, school, my part-time job, and just trying to have a social life. So I just wanted to not think for like two seconds. So I went on Instagram and as I was mindlessly swiping through my Instagram feed, I saw a video that caught my attention. And it was none other than Pharrell Williams. You know that guy who sang that really annoying song, Happy? That's it. Actually, let me not disrespect for <laughs> let me not disrespect him like that. He's made a lot of great contributions to the music scene. Happy is probably one of his most popular, but definitely not his best. Anyways, Pharrell Williams is a very successful rapper, singer, songwriter, and record producer. And he has a net worth of $250 million. And in the video that I saw of Pharrell Williams, he was showing off his latest collaboration with Louis Vuitton, the very successful fashion company. And this collaboration was a bag, and it was called called the Millionaire Speedy Bag. And yes, this bag is a million dollars. And why is it a million dollars? Let's see why. So instead of using a cotton canvas, which is what they usually use for Louis Vuitton bags, they swap that with crocodile leather and they are using gold hardware on this bag and they have actually added actual diamond pendants as embellishments. This bag was only supposed to come in one color, but now it comes in five colors, like we care. And this bag is only available for Louis Vuitton's top VIP clients. So us regular folks, we cannot get our hands on this bag. We cannot go in store to ask to see this bag. We cannot touch this bag. We cannot smell this bag. Can I be honest? We're not missing out. This bag is not worth a million dollars and in fact no bag is actually worth a million dollars and I don't think that people actually understand how much a million dollars actually is. I feel like social media has tainted our perception of money completely. If you're broke and you can't get a mortgage to buy a house then you should buy the bank to take out that mortgage and buy that house. Once you buy that house I want you to sell the bank back to the bank to pay off the mortgage. Because in Ontario right now, you cannot find a decent house for under a million dollars. Meanwhile, Mr. Happy is out here selling a bag for a million dollars. This is why I say rich people don't like us because if this bag is only for the exclusive clients, the VIP Louis Vuitton clients, then why are they posting on social media? Why are they promoting it? Why don't they just promote it to their clients? Like, don't you all have like a newsletter or like some way to like send them a personal invitation to check out the bag if they want to? Because I mean, if you can make this bag a million dollars, you can find some way to market it to your target audience. But when I saw that video of Pharrell Williams' regular degular bag that you'll be able to get off the H gate very soon, it just got me thinking about how out of touch celebrities are with the everyday struggles of everyday people. Or maybe they're not out of touch at all and they just really don't care. But I just wanted to explore the world of criminally rich people because it's something that I always talk about with my friends and something that really interests me too. So I think it's time that I finally made a video exploring this topic and let's end to this question. Are rich people and rich celebrities, rich influencers, are all of them out of touch with reality? So I'm wearing a hat right now because A, it's cold here, getting very chilly, and I got low iron, so this cold life is not for me. And second of all, my hair is not looking good right now, so this hat is gonna stay on for the rest of the video. Okay, so let's talk about the privilege and isolation that extremely wealthy people experience on a day-to-day -day basis that makes them out of touch with reality and makes them out of touch with the everyday struggles of people like us, people like you and me. When I say that rich people are out of touch with reality, it's important to note that this is not a blanket statement that applies to all wealthy people. Obviously everyone's different. I cannot generalize them and stereotype them and group them all together, but you best believe I will be dragging a lot of people in this video, so stay tuned. When I am talking about celebrities being out of touch with reality, I often find myself reflecting on the stark contrast between their extravagant lifestyles and the everyday challenges of people like you and me. It's a subject that sparks important important conversations about wealth, privilege, and the role of celebrities in society. One of the ways that wealth causes detachment from reality is isolation, which often comes with great affluence. Most wealthy people live in exclusive neighborhoods and they send their kids to private schools and often surround themselves with like-minded individuals, which limits their exposure to the everyday struggles and experiences of the average person. So if you're from Toronto, you probably know of Bridal Path. It's a very exclusive neighborhood where all the elites live. And even Drake has a house in that neighborhood. I don't think he even stays there for more than a week, but he did shoot his Tootsie Slide music video in that house. I'ma show you how to get it, it go right foot up, left foot slide. 
so uh, there's that but i honestly don't think that man has ever slept one night in that house regardless he still has a mansion there and the mansion's actually really nice i've seen it in person it looks really good i've never been inside though <laughs> obviously i've never been inside but it looks really good from the outside and if you watch the tootsie slide music video you see how big that house is and you see how nicely decorated it is even though i think it's excessive i won't lie the architecture of that house is really nice and the house is actually valued at a hundred million dollars so yeah that house is very expensive drake actually had to fight the city of toronto to build a higher fence so he could have more privacy so when you like drive by his house you can't really see it because that gate is high <laughs> but you can look from far away and look through the gates but i don't really recommend doing that there's security 24 7 so yeah don't do that anyways everyone who lives on bridal path is loaded they got money because those houses are huge and they're really beautiful and they're security 24 7 so it's a very gated community and it's very exclusive last year me and my girl actually went to check out the neighborhood just because we we're like we want some inspiration also we were bored and we we're just like you know what let's just see how mansions are anyways we were just driving by and like the houses were beautiful but there is security 24 7 and the security guard was looking at us like i know he was like mm -mm, these girls do not belong here we were in a honda civic it was beaten up the honda was tired so he definitely knew that we could not afford one of those houses there no shade to honda honda's a great car but the point i'm trying to get at is that this neighborhood is very exclusive very gated so people who live here have a sense of privacy and also a sense of seclusion neighborhoods like bridal path are designed to keep the world at bay and this seclusion can make it difficult for those who are extremely privileged and wealthy to understand struggles of people who live in less fortunate areas these celebrities cannot grasp living in a house that does not have at least three walk-in closets like we are not on the same page as them and i'm not trying to hate on celebrities for having huge mansions i mean is it excessive yes do they really need all that space no but are they still going to buy it yes and i would also like to point out that a lot of wealthy families opt for private schools that offer a premium education to their children this offers their children exceptional educational opportunities but it can also shield them from a diverse mix of backgrounds cultures and socioeconomic realities that public schools often present and this limited exposure can hinder their development of empathy and just understanding the world as it is because not everyone has the luxury of going to private school in fact most kids end up going to public school that's just how it is in ontario private school can cost between ten thousand to fifty thousand per year and if your parents are balling they can pay that but a lot of people's parents are not balling like that the average cost for private school in america is twelve thousand three hundred and fifty dollars for k-12 to and for high school it's sixteen thousand one hundred and forty four dollars and for university it is a whopping thirty two thousand eight hundred and twenty five dollars your parents gotta have money to get you into these schools and because of the cost only a small number of people can actually go and attend private schools in canada only 7.5 percent of children attended private schools between the years of 2020 and 2021 compared to the 91.1 percent of children who attended public schools in canada that's a very big difference meaning that these private schools are full of children who come from similar families and similar backgrounds so their understanding of the world is already very similar they don't have anyone who's challenging their perception of reality or their perception of money or just their perception of how the world operates and it's not these children's fault that their parents are rich and they decided to put them in private schools that's not what i'm saying in fact i feel like private schools are actually a safer option for the children of celebrities but i do think that growing up extremely privileged affects someone's ability to have a good understanding of the world it can often make them out of touch with reality and this reminds me of what happened with brooklyn beckham last year like it wasn't a huge controversy but like it was low-key funny and people were dragging him so let me just explain the tea to y'all real quick so brooklyn beckham has very very successful and rich parents his dad is former footballer David Beckham and his mom is Victoria Beckham. She was part of the Spice Girls and now she's a fashion designer. So the couple together has a net worth of about 500 million. So Brooklyn has a very comfortable life to say the least. And Brooklyn is known for dabbling in a lot of different career paths. At one point he was a footballer and he was a photographer. Then I think he even wrote his own book. Then he became a model. I think now he's a chef. Oh, well the last time I checked he's a chef. I don't know what he's doing right now. Maybe he's an astronaut. You know what? Let me check. Let me double check and see what what this man is what he is 
So Brooklyn, let's see what this man is doing. When you go on Google, they say that he's a socialite and former model. Anyways, Brooklyn Beckham is extremely privileged and lives a very comfortable lifestyle. Because of his parents' extreme wealth, he has been granted the privilege to be able to dabble in so many different career paths. And this is a luxury that a lot of us do not have, unfortunately, because we gotta pay bills. Anyways, let me get into the tea. This is popular TikToker. He goes by the name Daniel Mack, and he has a series on his TikTok page called What Do You Do For A Living? Where he goes on the street and just looks for people who look really well off or they have really nice cars he goes up to them and asks them what they do for a living so for one of his videos he actually saw Brooklyn Beckham and he decided to go up to him he didn't know he was Brooklyn Beckham at the time but afterwards he figured out that it was Brooklyn Beckham anyways he goes up to Brooklyn Beckham because he sees him in a really nice car it was a McLaurin P1 I feel like I'm saying this car name wrong because I'm not a car person like honestly I don't care about cars that much it's a McLaren I think you say McLaren I'll put a picture I'm probably saying it wrong so don't try my pronunciation. Anyways, this car is very, very exclusive. It's actually over a million dollars. Basically, Daniel asks Brooklyn, he's like, hey, what do you do for a living? And Brooklyn decides to say that he's a chef, implying that because he's a chef, he was able to buy that very expensive car. And I was just like, Brooklyn, Really? It's mommy and daddy's money. That car is over a million dollars and you're telling me you're a chef and because you're a chef, you were able to afford a car that's over a million dollars. Like be so for real. I think at that point he was only a chef for like a couple of months. I don't think he was a chef for that long. I don't even know if he's still a chef, man. As I said, he's probably an astronaut right now. He got dragged for saying that and the comments are actually funny. And Brooklyn seems like a nice guy or a cool guy, but when you're so privileged, you become so out of touch with reality. Brooklyn was born wealthy. He's never had to experience what normal people would experience. He is super, super privileged. So he's probably so out of touch with reality. And that's why he answered that question the way he did. Also, it's important to note, even though I kind of already mentioned this earlier before, but it's just important to note that wealthy individuals are usually going to spend their time with other wealthy individuals who think similarly as they do. So their social circle will include people who have similar values, interests, and concerns as them. And while there is nothing inherently wrong with this, it can result in an echo chamber where their view of the world is reinforced and their understanding of broader societal issues is very limited. And this reminds me of Miss Kim Kardashian's 40th birthday party during the Panini. So for some reason, I can't say the actual word because YouTube just is not allowing that. But you guys remember that big event that happened in 2020 that changed the world. I'm gonna call it Panini, but I think you know what I mean. Anyways, during the Panini, while people were losing their jobs, separated from loved ones, and dying and losing their loved ones, Kim Kardashian thought it'd be appropriate to post her 40th birthday party where she flew all of her close friends to a private island to celebrate her birthday. So let me actually read the tweets that she decided to tweet. After two weeks of multiple health screens and asking everyone to quarantine, I surprised my closest inner circle with a trip to a private island where we could pretend things were normal just for a brief moment in time. So she goes on to even elaborate. She's like, we danced, rode bikes, swam near whales, kayaked, watched a movie on the beach, and so much more. I realize that for most people, this is something that is so far out of reach right now. So in moments like this, I am humbly reminded of how privileged my life is. Hashtag this is 40. And I don't think you understand how out of touch with reality you have to be to do this. And to even post about it, I think that people are gonna be receptive to it. I'm so happy that you got to fly your whole crew to a private island and celebrate your birthday, while the rest of the world is losing their jobs. I trying to social distance and be separated from their loved ones just for the greater good of society. And you're out here partying on a private island posting up about it. No one cares, Kimberly. During the panini, last thing people want to see is celebrities flashing their extravagant lifestyles and flexing their wealth. And Kim is definitely surrounded by a bunch of yes men and people who are similar to her, which is the echo chamber that I was talking about earlier. As I said, they're surrounded by people who think the exact same thing as them. They do not have the experiences that we have and they cannot even grasp the concept of struggling to pay bills. These celebrities need to learn how to read the effing room and understand that not everyone lives their lavish lifestyles, which are not even ethical if we're being honest, but that's a discussion for another day. During the Panini, Kim was not the only celebrity who was acting like a fool and thought that she was above the law because of her status and her wealth. A lot of celebrities were acting up, but I can't talk about all of them because this video would be one hour long. I remember in 2020 or 2021, Rita Ora, she's a British singer-songwriter, she paid a restaurant 5,000 pounds, which equals to 6,143 
US dollars, a lot of money, <laughs> just to celebrate her birthday. Despite the fact that we were literally in the middle of a panini and we were supposed to be social distancing. But because she's Rita Ora and she has a lot of money, she thought that she was above the law. So she was like, you know what? I'm not gonna social distance because I have money so the law doesn't apply to me. And when it was exposed that Rita Ora did this, you best believe she got dragged. And the police actually called for a restaurant to have their license revoked because what they did was illegal, literally breached lockdown laws. But during the panini, celebrities were just 10 times more annoying. And I think that caused a shift in how we viewed people who are very, very wealthy. Because before that, I feel like people were more interested in checking out these people's lavish lifestyles. During the panini, when everyone was struggling and just trying to not die, the last thing they wanted to see was these extremely rich people flexing their wealth. It was just so off-putting, and it still is off-putting to this day. In summary, the privilege and isolation that often accompanies great wealth does form significant barriers between the wealthy individuals and the everyday struggles of an average person. So please do not look at these celebrities like they are your friend. In the end of the day, they do not care about you and they're just looking for more ways to make money. Okay, so let's talk about the ever-growing wealth gap because it is scary. The wealth gap is higher in the United States than it is in any other developed country and it's still continuously rising. This increase in inequality is attributed to many different factors, including global globalization, technological change, shifting tax policies, and persistent racial and gender discrimination. The gap between executive compensation and workers' wages has increased significantly. Between 1978 and 2018, CEO pay has increased by 900%. Let that sink in, 900%. While worker compensation has only increased 11.9%. Tell me, how is that fair? How does that make any sense? Concentration of wealth among the top 10% of Americans is particularly stark because it accounts for 70% of the nation's wealth. And this was in 2021. So imagine what it is now. That is just so crazy to me. I just can't wrap my head around it. That 10% of the population owns 70% of the wealth. Like, do you know how unfair that is? <laughs> like, that is extremely unfair and that does not sound ethical at all. What surprised me and actually disappointed me too was that the panini actually further widened this gap. People who were extremely wealthy got even more wealthy during the panini. People who did not have that much money to begin with were struggling immensely during the panini. A lot of people became more richer, like even Rihanna became a billionaire during the panini. And another interesting stat that I saw when I was reading this article was that the bottom 50%, which equates to about 63 million families, they owned 2.5% of the nation's wealth. You know how crazy that is. 63 million families own only 2.5% of the nation's wealth. Let that sink in. And I know I'm saying all of these numbers and it might be going over your head because, you know, like so many numbers. I'm gonna try to give you some context. The UK has a population of 60 million people. That's like saying the population of the UK only own 2.5% of America's wealth. That's a lot of people to have such little money. And I'm not even talking about people, I'm talking about families, 63 million families. So that's even more people. Like these families could have two, three, four, five children. So that's very, very little money to be going around around that much people. There is not one exact reason to explain why there is such a huge wealth gap in the United States. Not only the United States as well, a lot of other developed countries have huge wealth gaps. And because there are so many factors at play, it's really important to have these type of discussions because as we discuss it, we can learn it better and learn how to dismantle it. Just humanity is something else. Like when you grow up, you're so innocent, you're so naive, you think everything is Gucci. That's what I thought. And I grow up and I realized we have a lot of bad shit going on in this world, unfortunately. I just think it's really important to have these conversations and to acknowledge it, but also understand that you're one person, you cannot do everything to fix these type of situations. Even me, me making this video is not gonna fix the situation. I think it can at least create a conversation about it and we can talk about it and continue to keep this conversation alive so we can have a more equal world, hopefully in the future. Okay, but anyways, enough with all of that. Let's talk about some rich people. And this might be my favorite part of this video because I'll be doing some dragging in this section. So I want to start with Elon Musk because I remember my nepotism video, I was like, yeah, I don't like Elon Musk. And I saw some comments, they were like, oh, I would love to watch a video of you roasting Elon Musk. And I feel like this is kind of my time to shine. <laughs> this video is not solely based on Elon Musk though, so like I'm not going to go over everything I want to go over with Elon Musk. But if you guys really want me to talk about Elon Musk further, I can definitely do that, but I'm going to just talk about him real quick in this part. Elon Musk is a prominent entrepreneur, engineer, and inventor known for his 
work in the technology and space exploration industries. He was born on June 28, 1971 in South Africa, and he is the CEO and the founder of multiple high profile companies. So he is the CEO of SpaceX. He founded SpaceX in 2002. The company's goal is to reduce space transportation costs and enable the colonization of Mars as if we need it. Actually, I think it would be cool to live on Mars. Like I find astrology really cool. However, the way humans have messed up Earth, I cannot imagine what we would do to Mars. So honestly, I feel like we should just leave it alone. The thing is that if humanity does end up living on different planets, it's going to be the people who are extremely wealthy who get to live there first. That's something a really popular movie talked about. And I'm forgetting the name. I'm so mad right now. Actually, no, let me search it up. Let me search it up. So it was called Don't Look Up. And it was a really good movie. So if you haven't watched it, I highly recommend you watch it. Basically, these two low-level astronomers are like, yo, a meteor is gonna hit Earth and we're all gonna die. No one listened to them until it was too late. Everyone else had to die while the people who were extremely wealthy were able to get on a spaceship and fly to a different planet. Oh so, yeah, this world is not fair. <laughs> if you have money, you're good. Elon Musk has way more companies too. SpaceX and Tesla are definitely one of his most popular ones. I mean, Elon actually recently bought Twitter, which I really am mad about because now he has changed Twitter to X. I'm gonna still call it Twitter, but I don't even understand why he called it X. Like, he's just so annoying. He just bought Twitter to show that he can buy Twitter. Like, there's literally no reason for him to have Twitter, but the fact that it's called X now, this like, why? I don't know, this man's annoying. Anyways, Elon Musk has a net worth of $225 billion. I just can't, like, I really just can't wrap my head around how much money that is. We need to understand how much money that is. That is a lot. Who needs all of that money? Just really want to know because that's a lot of money. Like even one billion dollars is a lot, but 200 billion. 99.9% .9 of the world's population will never see that type of money. Really don't see how it's ethical to have one person hoarding all of this wealth. He is worth more in some countries. That brain cannot comprehend. So when I was researching Elon, I wanted to look at all of his properties, but it turns out he's in the process of selling all of his properties apparently. Right now he rents this really small space next to his company SpaceX. He rents it for $50,000 and it's really small, so very different from his previous huge mansion. Huge mansion. Girl, why can't I not say mansion? Mansion. <laughs> So honestly, I don't really believe it's gonna be a long-term thing. Knowing Elon is probably just something temporary and he's planning something even bigger. I just don't trust him. Like I really just do not trust that man. And when I was doing more research, I had my suspicions of Elon confirmed because this article wrote that it's believed that Elon's in the process of trying to build a company town, which he wants to call it Snail Brook. And in this company town that he would build, he would also build a glass house for himself. And the first thing I thought, I was like, what the hell is a company? Company town. So I searched it up and this is what a company town is. So a company town is a place where practically all stores and housing are owned by one company that is the main employer. Company towns are often placed with a suit of amenities such as stores, houses of worship, schools, markets, and, and recreation facilities. So I was like, damn. She move. Imagine being so rich that you can build yourself a whole town. And that makes more sense. Like honestly, I did not think Elon was going to be in that little tiny house for a very long time. I just knew like something had to be cooking up. I don't know if Elon has confirmed this yet, but this is something that a lot of articles are reporting about. So yeah, we're gonna see how this town, company town ends up looking like. I'm sure it's gonna be huge. And I'm sure Elon's house is gonna be gigantic. That just proves that money runs the world. When you're so wealthy, you can do whatever you want. This guy is literally out here building a whole town just cause he has money. <sighs> I'm tired. Okay, now let's talk about Jeff Bezos, the founder of Amazon. And at first, I didn't really have any issues with Jeff Bezos other than the fact that he was a billionaire. 2021, that's when he pissed me off and that's when I stopped liking him. When he decided to spend $5.5 billion to go to space for four whole minutes. And this happened 2021, the height of the Panini, when people were struggling. This man was spending $5 billion just to go to space for five minutes. That's where having money just makes you bored and just want to do outrageous things. People will never see $5 billion ever in their lifetime, and this man just spent it in the span of four minutes. Like, what was the point of being in space for four minutes for $5 billion? Like, why? <laughs> and this even reminds me of Squid Games 2. I'm sure you have all seen that. If you haven't seen Squid Games, I'm going to spoil it 
right now to skip this part anyways at the end we found out that that old man was like a really really rich guy and he created squid games because he was so bored with having all that money he needed some excitement so he decided to create the game in the first place which killed so many people people with money have no concept of actual humanity back to jeff bezos so the world food program recently challenged a couple billionaires i think jeff bezos elon musk and richard branson to commit six billion dollars to help 41 million people stop starving that sounds easy right elon musk is worth over 200 billion jeff bezos is worth i think 144 billion and richard branson i think he's worth about two billion ish i don't think they have gotten back to the world food program money that jeff bezos spent to fly to space could have literally saved about 37 million people from starving but no he decided to go to space his total real estate profile is valued at over 500 million dollars 500 million <laughs> I don't know why he's so obsessed with having so much property. Like, you're not gonna live in all of those houses. So what's the point of having a mansion in like every single state? It just feels so greedy when these people amass so much wealth and amass so much material possessions that they don't even need, that they don't even use on a regular basis. So what's the point of having it? And on Forbes, they gave Jeff Bezos a philanthropy score of two. So clearly he is not the most generous and giving guy out there. But during an interview with CNN in 2022, Jeff Bezos said that he plans to give away most of his fortune during his lifetime. He did not disclose the exact amount. So right now we're just going off of what he said. With time, we'll see what he does with his wealth. And I wanted to briefly talk about Rihanna as well. I know you guys are probably not expecting her. I'm not going to be hating on her because I do like Rihanna too, but I am going to be just pointing out some things that I do not really like. So Rihanna became a billionaire during the Panini. I mentioned this earlier. People who were already wealthy became even more wealthier during the panini but when she became a billionaire i saw it all over my timeline everyone was posting about it everyone was congratulating her from becoming a billionaire which you know great for her happy her business was successful and now she's a billionaire but also i don't care like realistically when i saw the post i just did not care i, I was not interested in congratulating her i was not interested in celebrating the fact that she's a billionaire because what does that do for me and what does that do for the millions of people who are struggling and do not even have like ten dollars to their name and especially Especially during the panini like who really wants to celebrate someone becoming a billionaire and as I said I'm not trying to hate on Rihanna because she is not as annoying as Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos is to me because there is no ethical way to become a billionaire there is no ethical way to make that much money and hoard that much wealth it's not ethical because you have to think of the working conditions that these employees work in how long do they work in a day how much is their pay all of those factors have to be taken into consideration because for the most part it's usually not that good anyways let me talk about Oprah Winfrey real quick because this girl was annoying me two months ago. It wasn't just Oprah, it was The Rock as well. Anyways, about two months ago, Oprah Winfrey and The Rock asked people to donate to their Maui fund. If you didn't know, in 2023, in August, there were a bunch of wildfires that broke out in Hawaii and thousands of people lost their lives and lost their homes. So Oprah and The Rock were trying to raise funds to help the people who were affected by the fires. Just to put things into perspective, the wildfires caused between four to six billion dollars in economic losses. And Jeff Bezos paid five billion dollars to go to space for four minutes. But that's sinking. Anyways, Oprah Winfrey and Dwayne Johnson decided to post a video of them asking people like you and me to donate to their fund on Instagram and TikTok. And as soon as they posted that, they were dragged. But Oprah and The Rock did start the fund with $10 million and they decided to ask for additional funds from regular people like you and me. They wanted us to contribute to their money. And let's just look at these people's net worths. Oprah is worth $2.8 billion. The Rock is worth $800 million. And they are asking me and you to donate to their fund. This is why I say rich people don't like us and rich people annoy me. They're very annoying. I don't know why they were asking us to donate when they could literally easily donate like a hundred million dollars if they wanted to and if they wanted to ask people to donate they should be asking their millionaire and billionaire friends they should not be asking us you can dig deeper in your pockets and find some money to donate so let me read you some of the comments that people are saying that's a math thing with this one you guys literally have so much money you can donate it and make it back within a year i agree because these people make so much money in a year like you can literally donate a lot of money and make it back within a year like you will be fine and another comment read i support maui and the cause but why are you asking us common folk who live paycheck to paycheck we struggle to put food on the table who helps us and i felt this one in my chest <laughs> 
<laughs> I felt this one because I was like, yes, like I am so sick of celebrities asking us for donations. Just rich people in general, do not ask me to donate anything. Do not. I do not want to see any type of celebrity, any person with money to post a GoFundMe. Like do not spread awareness, just donate and keep quiet. Now you see why I say celebrities and rich people do not like us. Okay, but enough with all of the negativity. Let's dive into the brighter side of the billionaire influence. So well, I don't know if there's really a brighter side of the billionaire life, but you know, I'm gonna just call it that. Let's talk about philanthropy and giving back because not all billionaires or millionaires are very stingy. Most of them are, but a lot of them do give away and have given away a lot of their wealth. So let's just talk about them. Let's also highlight them too. So this video is not just me complaining. <laughs> And while philanthropy does not exactly address the root problems directly, it does definitely help, you know, it provides opportunities, alleviates the stress for people, can facilitate community development. Like there's a lot of things that money can help with, but as I said, it doesn't always address the root of the problem. I wanna talk about Drake real quick. I don't know if you guys expected me to talk about Drake in this section of the video, but when I was doing the research on this video, I was actually surprised to see that Drake has donated to like a lot of charities and a lot of different organizations throughout his career as a rapper. And I actually really liked his God's Plan video. It just gave me really good vibes. It was really positive and he did a lot of good things with the money that his label gave him for the music video. He paid one girl's school fees. He was paying for everyone's groceries. He donated to several different charities and shelters. And that just made me happy to see all these people so happy and just crying tears of joy. And Drake is currently on tour right now and he has been giving away so much money and gifts and just has been doing so much on this tour. When he came to Toronto, I think he gave away a G-Wagon. He gave people like money for a shopping spree, he paid for one girl's like medical bills. He has been paying people's tuitions. Honestly, going to a Drake show at this point is an investment. And when I saw that he was paying people's tuition, I was like, let me buy a ticket. I literally went on Ticketmaster. I was ready to buy the ticket until I saw the price. Then I was like, you know what, I'll pass. And I found this article that listed all the donations that Drake has donated to. They only listed 10 and I know there's way more than that. I'll link the article below if you want to check it. But I was just actually surprised to see that he has donated that much because I didn't really have the greatest perception of Drake. But also at the same time too, a lot of celebrities can keep their donations private as well. But Drake has never posted no GoFundMe link on his story. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I've never seen him post anything or ask fans for money. So that's why I decided to include him in this part of the video. Okay, but now let's talk about Mackenzie Scott. She is the ex-wife of Jeff Bezos, the guy who founded Amazon, the guy who spent $5 billion to go to space. They were actually married, I think, for 26 years until she filed for a divorce. And due to the divorce, Mackenzie Scott owns a 4% stake in Amazon, which has, you know, made her very, very wealthy. She has a net worth of $32 billion. And she has already donated a lot of her money to many charities and many different organizations, which actually surprised me because people who have way more money than her have not even donated half of what she has donated. And just for fun, I wanted to search up who exactly is the richest person in the world. And to my shock, it was actually Elon Musk. For some reason, I thought it wouldn't be an American, but I, I should have known. So in conclusion, as we delve into the world of extremely rich celebrities, it becomes a very apparent that there is indeed a stark disconnect between their reality and the reality of average people. And while it wouldn't be fair to not acknowledge the talent of the contributions of said individuals like Pharrell Williams, who have achieved immense success within the music industry, it's equally important to acknowledge that these displays of their lavish lifestyles and their extravagant houses and vacations is very off-putting especially during the panini. The Louis Vuitton millionaire speedy bag serves as a symbol of this disconnect. And it's not even about the bag itself. It's about the way it was showcased on social media. It felt like they were rubbing it in our faces that we will never be able to afford such luxury. It's essential to have discussions that bridge this gap and foster empathy. Understanding between different segments of society is vital for creating a more inclusive and just world where we don't have billionaires asking us to donate. So let me know what you thought about this video 
video did you agree did you disagree let me know because i'm really curious and this is a topic that i'm really passionate about and i always talk about this with my friends but anyways don't forget to like comment share and subscribe and i'll catch you in my next video which will probably be more lighthearted because this topic was a little bit heavy <laughs> and even though i was smiling throughout the video and just cracking jokes this topic is really serious by engaging with this content and sharing your thoughts you can help raise awareness and initiate important conversations about the challenges that we have talked about in this video today so thank you for being part of this discussion and i look forward to seeing you in my next video which i promise will be more lighthearted. <laughs> but anyways thank you so much for watching bye guys